you felt invisible. And I want you to know that I see you and I thank you for the incredible work that you did. It was a tough, tough time and you weren't thanked enough. So thank you for everything that you did. Um, so I grew up in eastern Montana with a kindergarten in Mount City and grade school in Ashland. So my first experience with health care was at the Lean Deer Clinic where I had stitches in my head because one of my five brothers was throwing rocks at me. <laughs> so, you know, I was from Eastern Montana, right? Um, so I went on to row into Olympics, and I'm a lawyer. I have my own practice. I've been working here in Montana for the last 25 years. Um, I've been on the ground here with you by your side in the trenches, working with Montanans and poor Montanans for the last 25 years. Um, I was really fortunate to know Eric Bieber, who hired me to do the union work. Um, and I was at an event earlier where I was with Ellen, and I was telling her how much I was just incredibly grateful to have had Eric as a mentor in my life. Um, so we did a lot of work on collective bargaining, and I did arbitrations across the state, and I did a, um, a case in Warm Springs with the direct patient care providers. Um, and so I've done this with you, and I, I've seen some of the challenges really on the ground that you face. Um, so those are some of my experiences and what I bring to this, and really I'd love to just answer your questions. I'm running for Congress because um, I'm the sixth of ten kids. I rode in the middle of our Olympic eight. I know the value and the power of community and the middle. I played Class C basketball, and there is no accountability like you have in a small town. People would say, oh, Monica, you know, you didn't play very well the other night, and I'd say, I scored 30 points, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I gave one. Like, oh, you know? <laughs> so, I, this is my home. It's my only home. I don't have another one, and I'm not going anywhere, and I think that the silent majority are those of us who agree on most things most of the time. And I put 40,000 miles on my minivan, traveling this district, talking to Montanans. I'm here for you, I will work for you, I will not be outworked in this campaign, and I will not be outworked in Congress, and I will be a representative that you can be proud of. So I'm happy to take questions, and here we go. So Monica, to combat the current pandemic situation and prevent future failures to protect nurses, healthcare workers, and the public from infectious disease, such as COVID-19 or other public health emergencies, and recognizing the practice of nursing is science and evidence-based, where nurses utilize best practices and standards of care, can we count on you to collaborate with the Nurses Association and other healthcare experts around public health, nursing, and healthcare issues? Additionally, can we count on you to support evidence-based data and science when addressing healthcare issues? Why or why not? Yes. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I, I, I come to this as an advocate, so I will be more than just a support person for you. I will be your advocate, and I also want to thank you for the work that you've done. Um, filing the litigation that is ongoing. I know that's been a challenge and you've been directly involved in that and you all have had the courage to step to the front of the line and take a position and ask you know, uh, for advocacy. So thank you for your work. I will be a partner with you and I will be an advocate for you. Awesome, thank you. Um, next question, so right to work more accu accurately referred to by M&A as no rights at work, continues to be of concern, and already federal decisions have stripped away collective bargaining rights for public employees across the U.S., which weakens the collective voice of workers, professional nurses included. Right to work legislation would greatly impact our nurses' ability to advocate for safe, quality working conditions, affecting patients, nurse staffing, and high quality patient care. How will you ensure the collective bargaining rights for the Montana professional nurses to form and or join a union that they're not further weakened? 
Thank you for the question. I can answer this on a number of different levels, but I am absolutely 100% behind your right to bargain collectively to set the terms and conditions of your employment and with unions. And I will talk about unions publicly. Um, I've been with you in the trenches, like I said, this has been my work, um, and it's really important that you have an advocate with you on these issues as well. Um, through my travels across the district, I've heard from union workers who said, you know, no, long, no sooner do we finish a contract than we have to turn around and start rebargaining again. That's wrong. There are so many ways that unions in collective bargaining are being attacked around the margins. It's not just about um, the, the pay. It's about terms and conditions of employment. I have a niece who went through the rigors of nursing school and she went out and she was working for about a year and a half and because of the shortages that you all are way too familiar with, she was being run ragged. And she said, this isn't the life I want. You know, I'm, she's young, she just got married, she wanted to start a family, and she was thinking, I can't, I can't look at this as a career. That's wrong. We need to support you, and the terms and conditions that you bargain together need to be supported publicly. Unions have done our middle class in America right, and you need to have people do right by you, and we need to stop these nonsense right to work bills in their tracks because I'm tired of them getting run up. And you shouldn't have to spend your time coming up and testifying against that stuff. I will fight for you on that. So final question, Monica. We're talking about healthcare access, affordability, the ACA, prescription drugs, reimbursement parity, Medicaid expansion, it's kind of like healthcare in a nutshell. So, with all of those, with all those topics, like you know, how can you help us protect healthcare and, and improve it? Um, so, so many ways to come at this. I do want to just tell you a little bit about my background. Um, my dad was a psychologist, and we lived in eastern Montana. And he served an incredible, obviously, a huge geographic population. Um, so to do his job, he got his pilot's license and rented a plane so he could travel huge distances. And um, when he died, and I, I don't know why I'm telling you this story other than I was talking to Ellen Beaver about it. Um, when he died, somebody was, uh, his nurse at his bedside was taking care of him and she referred to him as Dr. Trinnell. And my sister and I said, why are you calling him Dr. Trinnell? And she said, my husband and I adopted a baby when um, you know we were young and your dad saved our family. And I think that those are the kinds of stories of caregiving that you probably never hear in your lives, but your, those stories will be told about you. So I think in terms of supporting healthcare, one of the things we need to talk about is mental health. So the Mental Health Parity Act, we need to enforce that, the legislation is there. We need to demand that insurers pay for the care that you pay for when you buy insurance. Um, so, I think the other things around healthcare, um, you know, I, I know that uh, nurse practitioners is a huge growing area, good jobs, good pay, so we need to support that. We need to support our kids coming out of schools, colleges, without, you know, crippling debt. We need to get a handle on college tuition, I mean, total time. <laughs> Sorry I told those stories. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to answer. <laughs> anyway, I think there's a lot that we need to do about healthcare, but I, I think for me, maybe it all sort of distills to one thing is that we have to take the profit out of pain. Mm -hmm. And we have to be behind really treating people about, you know, healthcare is about being healthy and caring for ourselves. And that means so many ways. It means mental health, it means our physical health, it means our community health too, and being together as a community. So those are all the ways that I will support you. Thank you.